What's good to YouTube? How y'all doing? It's your boy Kerry from Kerry Michael Creative Media and I am back with another video today, man. Today's topic is tips for shooting events. And I have my handy dandy notes just to ensure I, I stay on track today. And don't overrun on the minutes. Where we at already? 20 something seconds. Stay, let's try our best to stay on point. So tip number one, understand the event, okay? Uh, if you're shooting an event, you want to gather all the information for the event, you know, about scheduling, uh, important moments, key people of that event you're shooting, whether it be, i.e., a wedding or a panel, something that you're shooting, a big event, any event, any and every event, anything that has large groups of people, consider that an event. <laughs> all right, so you want to understand the event. You want to understand the location of the event. There's so much yeah, that has to go into when uh, you're shooting an event that you want to make sure you catch all the key moments, man. All right. You want to anticipate important shots and be prepared for crucial moments. Like I said, key moments, man. These are all things that you do not want to miss. So that's why you have to understand the event. Tip number two, you want to plan your shots. All right. You want to create a shot list. That's a, a major important factor for me whenever I'm going into an event. And I learned this from my days of doing photography mainly. Uh, and this this goes for both photography, videography, for anything in, in the media. You want to plan your shots uh, if, if you're behind a camera. You want to. Uh, reason being, you want to have a shot list. You want to uh, make sure you have uh candid moments group shots individual portraits and important activities that are happening at that event okay you don't want to miss that because that's a hundred percent things that they're going to want included in the photos and the videos for whatever event that you're shooting all right plus also having a shot list and planning out your events keeps you organized Keeps you completely organized, so when it comes time to offload the files, you know what's what. All right, all right. Number tip number three: use the right equipment. Use the right equipment. You want to choose the appropriate camera, lenses, and accessories for the events. For most events, a zoom lens and a fast prime lens can cover a wide range of shots. Zoom lens is important. You want to have a zoom lens so. If, if, if it's a person that's going to be up on stage or, or, or you're shooting sports, the person's going to be further away, you want to be able to zoom in on that person. Now, you want prime lenses because sometimes events are hosting different things that are going on in, in, in a true, throughout that event. So you're going to have spots where you need the prime lens with a lower f-stop. That way you can get good shots in darker areas, spots that are not really lit properly, lit well. And of course, with weddings, you can get away with uh, probably, uh, F4 because that way you can still light certain sections if you can you know you can still bring additional lighting but now if you're shooting like a big event like I do a lot of stuff for Circuit of America's when I'm shooting for them uh, there's gonna be locations I can't go in with a light I just gotta go in with my camera so I have to have a good lens a prime lens with a lower f-stop to ensure that I I'm getting good footage in a darker location all right Again, that was number three, use the right equipment. Now, number four, pay attention to lighting. Lighting plays a, uh, let me, I'll read this one verbatim. Lighting plays a crucial role in photography and videography. If the event is indoors, consider the available lighting or whether you need to bring additional lighting equipment. As I said, goes back to weddings. Weddings, you are afforded that, 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 of the, uh, you're able to do that. You're afforded the, the opportunity to bring extra light in with, with weddings versus now if it's a, a major event like something like I just said, like Circuit of Americas or say a Christmas event or some where you know it's going to be you do floor to floor or going from one room to another room, you don't have the opportunity to bring light. In. Of course, yeah have the appropriate lens for that but you definitely for sure want to pay attention to light lighting in those areas so <clears throat> a good way to ensure you have the appropriate lighting is is, is talk with the people uh, whoever is uh, planning this event and such to ensure hey am i able to bring additional lighting if need be 
or so you know 90 percent some sometimes they'll say yes sometimes they'll say no because they don't want too much uh you know they they a lot of places prefer candid shots anyways off of that on to number five capture candid moments some of the most genuine memorable shots come from candid moments boom like i was just saying candid stuff they want you to make it look like nothing staged okay so that's where good lenses such as telephoto lens come in pretty handy and dandy like me and my buddy we shoot a lot of uh, um club stuff stuff here around in the austin area and zoom lens come in real good for those canon moments where i could be across the room if i see something going on across the room that's uh gonna be worthwhile for that shot hey we capture it boom zoom in capture it candid real nice candid shots so you definitely want to catch candid shots make it look like you're not even there pretend like you're not in the room when you're shooting some of these stuff so that's where candid shots come in real good into play and it looks awesome in your footage it looks great on camera for photos and videos all right now six be discreet as i just mentioned you want to pretend like you're not even there with some of these events okay so weddings you can interact it's good it's good to interact with people at weddings but some of these other events where it's more like corporate style events and stuff you they, they 90 a lot of times i, I want to say 90 percent of the times a lot of them don't really want you getting in the middle of what they're doing because a lot of them are just busy talking about what they're doing there and they don't want the camera guy all up in their space so be discreet <laughs> so, so like i said uh for formal especially during formal events try to be unobstructive while capturing shots all right and and also some of these events they don't want you getting in the way of of persons that are say it's a seating they don't want you getting in the way of people on the front row uh watching whatever it is that's going on so for stuff like that, walk with a telephoto lens so you can stay in the back, capture great shots away from blocking whoever's paying for whatever seating to not be bothered. So that's where it comes into being discreet. That was number six. Now, number seven, use different angles. All right. Experiment with various angles to add depth and visual interest to your shots. Capture shots from different heights and positions to create a diverse collection of visuals use different angles guy i don't really want to break that in i mean this self-explanatory shoot high shoot mid shoot low shoot side side angle angle Dude. angles guys angles self-explanatory a lot of you have done geometry and no shapes and stuff shoot <laughs> different areas all right number eight focus on people all right events are all about the people so make them the focal point of your shots. Capture facial expressions, interactions, and emotions to tell the story of the event. Of course, that's all gonna come into play with the candid stuff and, and whatever lens choices you use to capture those moments to not interrupt. Cause if you're, don't, don't, don't walk up on somebody that, oh wow, they're smiling, be all up in their face. Cause now they're gonna be like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> don't don't do that guy focus on the people focus on the people make like as goes back be discreet while you're doing it catch those candid shots focusing on them and catching that looks awesome as i said now number nine vary your shots all right capture a mix of wide shots show the entire scene medium shots to focus on a group or activities that's going on and then close-ups for details and emotions it's simple vary your shots if you're shooting a wedding wide capture the whole scenery what's going on where it's being where it's taking place this is, when you're varying your shots you're basically telling a story of what you're shooting at these events all right medium shot as i said to focus on a group of activities a group of people at the reception laughing smiling with the groom or the bride happy they're dancing and then a close-up to capture the emotions the tears the bride or the groom crying while or, or the parents or whoever's reading stuff crying capture vary your shots vary your shots and this goes for not only weddings as i said whatever other event you're shooting vary your shots all right 10 
pay attention to your composition. Yeah, that's a big one, man. You want to follow basic composition rules, rules of third, uh, leading lines, framing to create visually appealing images and videos. You, you want to know how to compose your shots properly because, I mean, if you just shoot shots straight on, that's going to get boring if you turn in a whole bunch of shots that are just straight ahead just everybody just like facing forward that's gonna be a boring ass portfolio of shots to turn so vary your shots man vary your composition make sure you're getting leading lines on a lot of your shots to make it look vi vi uh, real visually appealing so there you know composition is hard to explain just by verbal but uh it's better to show than tell so I'll do a video where I just break down composition one time. One time. That's it. One, one day I'll do it. <laughs> I don't know when. But anyways, number 11, shoot in RAW. Shoot in RAW if possible. If your camera supports it, shoot in RAW format. Guys, all, almost all the cameras today shoot in RAW. So just shoot in RAW. Stop shooting JPEG. <laughs> RAW files retain more information and allow for better post-processing adjustment. All right, simple. RAW is the way to go. RAW files are the way to go. Whenever you're shooting RAW, you're going to have the best availability to edit in post, okay? It's so always shooting RAW. It gives you way more availability to edit in post. It makes it so much better. Anyways, number 12, don't overlook details, okay? Capture small details that contribute to the atmosphere of the event. Decorations, signage, centerpieces. If you're going to shoot an event, shoot the building that event's being held in. When you're walking into the event, shoot the signs leading to pointing out or explaining which direction they need to go. You get in there, shoot the decorations they have out there shoot the uh pamphlets that they're they leave out there shoot if they're different boots in the area shoot each one of those sim different boots just uh don't overlook look details all these details are stuff they're probably probably 100 percent gonna want uh at the end like yo did you capture this they were there oh you didn't why not so capture every single thing you see there at an event don't just go there and shoot the people on stage or or the bride and groom and the family you, you're gonna if you go to a wedding you want to capture the rings capture the the setup they have out there uh at at the actual wedding the, the flowers on the table the setups the decorations there's so much you want there's so much detail in in every event you're gonna want to have to capture it you want to capture those details okay everything i usually break it down like this if it wasn't there before they set up for the event capture it okay <laughs> simple as that all right number 13 manage your gear that's a big one guys have extra memory cards batteries other essentials on hand uh events can be long and you don't want to run out of space or power manage your gear that's a big one. I've been on a few events where people didn't have extra memory cards, their shit ran out. Now, okay, now I gotta sacrifice one of my additional memory cards to, to lend to them. So I shot a, a, a New Year's event and the other photographer that the company hired, so they hired me to do video, they hired this person to do photos. This person got to their event, they ran out of space on their, their small, they, I don't know why they can't uh, uh, event with a 32 gig memory card. They ran out of space. I had to lend this person an extra memory card, which kind of sucks because now it took away from me just in case I needed additional space on mine. So thank God I didn't because I walk with big memory cards every time I go to shoot big events. But manage your gear properly. I always go to events with multiple batteries. I'm not going with just three batteries. I'm going with six, seven, eight, nine, ten batteries if I have to, just in case. Because sometimes you got to remember, batteries can fail. A battery, you can charge it all the way up, juice up all your batteries tonight. You get out there, one and two, one or two batteries might just all of a sudden magically don't want to work. 
it's a walk with extra memory cards walk with extra batteries walk with if, if you're shooting video stuff walk with extra cords um uh, HDMI cords just in case if, if you're shooting video and it's plugged up to your uh your monitor hey you might bump that cord by accident and cause a short now you can't view your monitor have extra cords HDMI cords just in case it's so many things always walk with extras of everything walk with an extra camera battery yeah what if you fall and that camera in your hand breaks or, or the lens messes up or something walk with extra lenses walk with extra walk with extras of everything guys manage your gear properly okay more is better less is worse <laughs> anyways number 14 be mindful of audio for video one of my last video i mentioned that uh, i have to be more mindful with audio okay if shooting uh, videos pay attention to audio quality use external mic uh, to capture a clear sound and reduce ambient noise i have to that's something i personally have to do i have to get way better with with doing audio on my end because i'm so used to just going out and shooting photos or shooting videos which don't require too much audio but now that i've gotten been getting in a lot more into doing stuff like interview style stuff and, and uh uh f short film stuff i'm learning that i have to take audio a lot more serious so with audio stuff also you want to make sure you walk with extra audio just in case what if you're walking with uh, lavalier lapel mics and now you get a short in your cord you want to make sure you have extras of those as well just in case so that way you can still be able to hey replace that change it out hook the the person back up now you you're you're gravy you're good and <clears throat> you want to have multiple audio sources so like i said i walk with the task can just so I could have that close as well too. So that'll be a second audio source versus just having the lapel mics and whatever. And every now and then, sometimes I'll walk with a mic just in case as a third audio source, but it's good to have multiple audio sources. Be mindful of audio for video and also walk with headphones. If you're doing like talking head stuff, of course it looks kind of weird if you're out shooting an event and you got headphones on your head, but, uh, uh, 90% of the time, you really won't need the headphones for stuff like that, though. But anyways, but interview stuff, walk with headphones, so that way you're listening in as well to ensure all your your audio sound is coming in clear, no, not staticky and such, okay? All right, number 15, post-processing. Once the event is over, edit, enhance your photos, videos, correct exposure, adjust colors, crop if needed, keep your edit editing style consistent for a cohesive final result, okay? Post-processing plays a major role once everything is over, okay? Once the event is done, you've captured everything you needed to capture. The post-processing process, post-processing process? Sounds weird saying that. <laughs> the post-processing process, damn. Yeah, whatever. The post-processing process is where it all comes into play okay it all boils down to that once and if you shoot everything properly it's gonna be a lot easier for you okay if you do all your, your white balance correct if, if you do your proper exposures uh if you do proper frame rates all if you do everything correct as you're supposed to do for, for uh videos wise and photo wise uh post processing is gonna be a lot easier for you okay don't be one of those guys that say oh i'll fix it in post because now that's more work for you to do in post you don't want to be that guy okay and last but not least last but most important deliver promptly okay guys uh if you're providing photos videos to the client attendees deliver them as soon as possible while the event is still fresh in everyone's mind okay so when it comes to delivering promptly that's something you want to have uh honestly already put out and 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 you you all have already talked about it it's in contract and right now as to when you're gonna deliver so that way you set set yourself a timeline so that way you don't fall back on when you're supposed to turn in things and now they're waiting a month two months later they receive what they were supposed to receive okay so that's why i normally try and have a, a quick turnaround of three to seven days with whatever i shoot just to ensure <laughs> i am ready to hop on the next project and not be overlapping projects 
It's way better to do it that way. If I shoot today, I'm gonna come home and start editing from today until I get completed. It'll take me a day, two, three days to get an edit done just because sometimes I'll edit. And now I'll see, oh man, okay, I noticed this. I need to change this. All right, now because I got to move this or adjust this now, oh, I might see an, a clip that, you know what? I prefer this clip other than that other clip. So, I mean, that that's part of the post-processing, but then you want to make sure you're still sticking within a certain timeline so you can deliver it promptly to the client. All right, guys, but that is it today. For tips for shooting events, let me run that back down them number by number. Number one, you want to understand the event. Number two, you want to plan your shots. Number three, you want to use the right equipment. Number four, pay attention to lighting. Number five, capture candid moments. Six, be discreet. Seven, use different angles. Eight, focus on people. Nine, vary your shots. Ten, pay attention to composition. 11, shoot in raw, if possible. 12, don't overlook details. 13, manage your gear. 14, be mindful of audio for video work, of course. 15, do good on your post-processing. And 16, deliver your work promptly. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Where are we at right now? Whoa. 21 minutes it's a lot of information on this one hope this uh helps somebody out there glad we got to talk again guys trying to be a little bit more consistent with my videos this time man trying hopefully y'all liking it all six seven of yours <laughs> all right peace oh by the way i almost forgot today's video is being shot on the canon eos r and i actually i actually I'm shooting in 4K on this today. Let me know if y'all see a difference between when I shot it in 1080 and then the other video where I used the R6, shot that in 4K, and today's video with the R in 4K. Let me know.